Hey guys, it's the aerospace industry. And today, I'm gonna talk about the space shuttle's engines and propulsion systems. And this will be the first video in the space shuttle video series, which will contain a video about each side of manufacturing the space shuttle. In the next few videos, I'll try to cover the shuttle's aerodynamics, materials, thermal protection, avionics, and maybe more. Now let's talk about the propulsion systems. We have the shuttle's main engines, solid rocket boosters, the orbital maneuvering system, and the reaction control system. Powering the shuttle carrying crew and cargo up to 65,000 pounds or 29.5 tons into low earth orbit, achieving altitudes up to 560 kilometers and allowing it to maneuver and align while in orbit. Let's start with the main propulsion system, or the shuttle's main engines. It consists of three reusable liquid propulsion rocket engines. Back then, the space shuttle main engines were the first and the only liquid-fueled rocket engines to be reused, each producing about 375,000 pounds or 170,000 kilograms at liftoff and it could produce a maximum thrust of 512,000 pounds or 232,000 kilograms in vacuum, which is more than 12 million horsepower. With high performance fuel turbo pump, developing 69,000 horsepower and oxidizer turbo pump, developing 25,000 horsepower. It was also the first staged combustion cycle engine for the US. Before this, the technology was used in the Proton rocket in 1965 by the Soviet Union. We will not talk about the engine cycle in details in this video, but feel free to leave a comment to let me know if you want a separate video about it. At liftoff, and when the main engines have reached 90% of full thrust, the solid rocket boosters will ignite. And here comes the SRBs. The solid rocket boosters or SRBs are 150 feet long with over 12 feet in diameter. They were the largest solid rockets ever built. Also the first reusable solid rockets and the first to be certified for crewed space flight. Each booster generated 3 million pounds of thrust. Now with the two SRBs and three main engines, we have about 7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, which is huge even by today's standards. The boosters will boost the shuttle for about 2 minutes and then they are separated to parachute and splash into water to be recovered and reused. The orbiter and the external tank continue their flight to the orbit, consuming about 1.5 million pounds of fuel. The tank is now a dead weight, so it also separates from the orbiter. Now we are almost in orbit, and the three main engines shut down, and here comes the orbital maneuvering system. The orbital maneuvering system is two rocket engines, each delivers nearly 6,000 pounds of thrust for the final push of ascent, major orbital maneuvers, and ascent. Unlike the main engines, the fuel tanks for this system is located inside the orbiter itself. The tanks contain monomethyl hydrazine as fuel and nitrogen tetroxide as oxidizer. The hypergolic propellant gives the advantage of the spontaneous ignition when its components come into contact, which means they need no ignition system and they can fire any number of times by just opening valves. But let's not forget the toxicity and the expensive safety arrangements. The same type of fuel is used in the reaction control system, which will handle small maneuvers in orbit and control the altitude of the orbiter and adjust re-entry altitude and angle of attack, which we will discuss in the aerodynamics video. This system contains 38 main thrusters each produces 870 pounds and six vernier thrusters each produces 24 pounds of thrust. 
14 of the main thrusters and 2 of the vernier are located in the nose section. 12 of the main thrusters and 2 of the vernier are located in each side of the rear of the orbiter. The orbital maneuvering system and the reaction control system work together until re-entry and the orbiter glides to a runway. The next video will be about the shuttle's aerodynamics. If you are interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.